I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. What's going on, fight fans? This will be a no intro podcast. Because <laughs> I was told I need to switch it up. This is the From a Fan's Perspective podcast, episode seven. How you guys doing out there? So on this episode, we're going to go back in time and recap a few fights that weren't MMA fights. They were boxing matches. And last week, we had two amazing boxing matches. And we found out a lot. I learned a lot. And um, the first one that I learned from, unfortunately, was the Evander Holyfield versus... Can you say his name for me? I don't know how to pronounce Vitor Belfort? Yeah, v Vitor. Vitor. Vitor Belfort. <laughs> Vitor Belfort. Yeah, so that was a, a quick fight. Um, it was sad. Yeah, it was for me. I'm eating my words today. This whole week, I've been sulking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, I feel I feel bad for Evander Holyfield because it it was a money grab. Like you can see, even like I watched, man, I watched them go back to the um, back to the locker rooms, and they were just asking them, you know, what what were your thoughts on the fight? And all he was saying was that it was an early stoppage. He said nothing about what he could have did better. Nothing about like, man, I, you know, I made a mistake. Right. It was an early stoppage. And that lets me know that it's about the money. You know, I think he knows that he shouldn't be in there. Um, he's a shell of himself and uh, it's dangerous, you know, and I, I felt bad seeing him look like that. So, yeah, man, you when know, you props to Vitor, I guess. Yeah, when you when you're 60 years old, you shouldn't be getting in there. But the thing is, um, and and even even with uh, California denied him with with his medicals because he didn't pass. So oh, they yeah, had oh, to yeah. they had to go somewhere else just to hold the, to host the fight with him in. So that right there should have told them no. I mean, before that, him being 58 should have told them no. See, that's and me and Chris. Shout out Chris behind the camera. We were talking about that uh, <laughs> yes, yesterday, I think. Um, I didn't think that that was what I was banking on, that 58 was that big of a difference from being in your mid to late 40s. See, yeah. Especially being a heavyweight boxer. I didn't know it would be that much of a fall off. Like, crazy. that was crazy. But at the same time, I didn't see that man throw one punch. I don't know if it's because he couldn't. When he fell out of the ropes? <laughs> no. It was because he threw a hook. He threw a hook and fell out of the ropes. He didn't get hit and fall. I thought he got. No, he threw punched. a hook and fell out of the ropes, and that's what I, that's why I said uh, he got knocked down twice because I counted it as a knockdown, which I don't know if they did or not, but I don't think they did. But that that fight was supposed to be an exhibition, which means that if somebody gets knocked down or things get too crazy, they stop it. So it wasn't an early stoppage, and it honestly should have been stopped as soon as he started getting beat up like that because yeah. he's just too old to be getting hit in the head that much his his speech isn't even the same as it used to be so it's really to me it, it was a perfect stoppage or if anything a late stoppage but i don't think mike tyson looked like that and mike tyson is around like if he would have gotten there with mike tyson mike tyson would have killed but him. but but mike tyson was also against someone who didn't blitz him right roy jones is more defensive than he is offensive. but i'm just saying as far as just looking good in the ring like even just but he was against roy jones no, but I'm talking about even, it just looked like a Vander shouldn't have, like Mike looked like he could have been in there. I mean, granted, I, you, I wouldn't say, opponent, I wouldn't say let Mike go in there against somebody, but I'm talking about just, Mike looked like he, okay, he could be in there. Like Holyfield looked lost, like from the start, like he looked weak. He, I mean, in his body, like didn't look weak, but he, yeah, right, yeah. as far as like physique wise, but yeah. it's just like everything else, it just looked, I'm like. Oh man, this is this is gonna be bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> honestly. If you um, did you watch the Roy Jones and Mike Tyson? Yeah, I did. Cause I I watched that one live. But I didn't buy it. Was, <laughs> I didn't buy it, but I watched it. But yeah, it was it wasn't it wasn't good. And I didn't like the way Mike people Tyson disrespected Roy. Yeah, I, I actually thought Roy right. won. That's the crazy part. Yeah, I was I watching, but I'm biased because Roy is one of my favorite boxers. Yeah, so me too. I'm like, I'm a little biased when it comes to him. But I thought he won. I thought he. Hit Mike more than he, but everybody else. Roy seems doesn't. To Roy doesn't get the credit he deserves. No, he don't he's, at all. He's if you go by records and you just go by like what that man has done and yeah. the way he's done it, 
Like, if he's not in your top, he's in my top seven. I ain't gonna say top five, but because I got nostalgia and all that in there, including my top five. But Is this? he's in my top seven. Is this on? No, I can't find any batteries for it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Technical issues, it, but um, it'd be like that. Yeah, it really do. But uh, so I don't, I don't like how people disrespected Roy coming into that fight. Where did you come up fight. with a top seven? Why didn't, why didn't you just say top ten or top five? <laughs> because. Top I wanted to say top 10, but top 10 was too far. He knows where, man. He you knows he's in, he's in like six or seven. That was some crazy. Like that. No, because cause I know so many, like, I'm not like a boxing historian, but I know so many that, like, I don't want to dip, because that, that range from five to 10 to me is like, if you put somebody at eight and you put somebody at five, like, that's a big difference for me in boxing. <laughs> Like it might not, it might sound crazy, but then, no, because that could, that's disrespectful to Roy. Like because I wouldn't put Roy at eight, nine, or ten, because to me it's like top five, and then six and seven might be really but, close, and then eight, nine, and ten are kind of like down the line. But the thing is, when you say top ten, that doesn't necessarily mean he's in the lower ranks. That he could be one. Yeah, it but just I, means but he's that he's one. in the top. There's ten guys, and he's one of them. But he's not in eight through. He was ten. saying, yeah, he was he's saying in, he's like he's, he's six or seven. He's six or seven. Six or seven. I should have said that. <laughs> hey, wait, he's in my top <laughs> seven. What, what's your beef with what? the number seven, dude? <laughs> right. It's just a, a weird number to come I, up with for like he's, he's, he's top he's seven. He, <laughs> he knows within that degree. I don't certainty. know if he's six or seven. Two, is what six. I should have said. <laughs> right. He's six or seven, and that's just like off the fly. I got to really think about Yo, it. Yo, I've been there, Jabari. Because Floyd's in my top five. Muhammad Ali is my dude. top five. <laughs> Floyd, Muhammad Ali, um, Sugar Ray Leonard is in my top five. And that's one, two, three. Um, who else is um? Did Roberto you... Duran is in my top five. Okay. Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran. Um, you gotta say Floyd, bro. I said Floyd already. Oh, I was about and then, to say. like to be honest, I probably put Manny Pacquiao in my top five, right okay. behind Floyd. I'd probably do that. I put uh, Floyd in front of Roberto Duran, and I put Sugar Ray Leonard in front of Floyd, and then Manny Pacquiao's my fifth. Cause so I think Roberto Duran's better than Manny. <laughs> okay. And then six and seven is eh. Roy's in there though. I gotta <laughs> think about that, but Roy's in there. Okay. Did you see that? Uh, that um, let me find it. It's a it's a boxing match that just got booked. Um, I gotta find. Like uh, exhibition or is it a real? No, it's an actual boxing match, bro. It's uh, Terrence Crawford versus Sean Porter. Oh, they got booked. Yeah, it got booked for uh, November twentieth. I thought they fought. No, they didn't fight already. No, Sean Porter. Sean Porter fought um, Keith Thurman. Yeah. Um, I always get them mixed up. Yeah, I, I get him and Keith Thurman mis mixed up. Uh, this is Terrence Crawford's gonna knock him out. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> yeah, I think so too. But it's cool. It's a cool fight, especially since I know these guys and like. What's I don't, the date for that? Again? November twentieth. Okay. Cool. But um, I just I wanna man, Errol Spence is my favorite boxer right Me too. now. Me too. Right now he's he just I think he smokes all of them. And I he's think a, this is all a setup for, um. Earl Spence, Terrence Crawford. Yeah, exactly. So, yep, that's what Spence I think already so too. fought Sean Porter. So this is kind of like Crawford got to be in there. Yeah, you know the whole setup. So, so you call so. Sean Porter a gatekeeper, huh? No, he's not a gatekeeper. <laughs> and dude, when it comes to boxing, man, it's I don't know. Man. Yeah, man. Sean Porter's not a gatekeeper. He's no, not gonna. He's be actually champion. good, but yeah, he's he's, no. he's decent. He'll he'll be one of the champs. There's he's thirteen scrappy. belts in each weight yeah. class. 42 weight classes. There's some good matchups for him, though. There's some great boxing yeah, fights. Yeah, yeah, for there. sure. Especially with the weight classes being like two pounds apart mm -hmm. each, like two, three pounds. Like, and I'm not even exaggerating. There, there's some weight classes that are like three or four pounds, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, it doesn't even make sense. They need to just combine all of those. I think they should have like a solid 10 to 12, maybe. Man, call it a day. Yeah, um, I don't like it being so close, but I actually like it. I like it to be more than what the UFC has. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. But there's just UFC so many. Too little weight there's class, so like. many boxers though compared to UFC fighters. That's true. But that's true. So I think in the future UFC will have to change, and um, just because there's just going to be so many more fighters and so many different body types, and guys are going to perform better at different weights. So I think eventually they'll get there. You know, ten, twenty years from now. But boxing <laughs> is just 
Like, for real, it's going to take that long. Bo- dude, yeah. there's millions of boxers. But, to be honest, man, I see more MMA gyms than I do boxing. Yeah, I know. I don't see boxing gyms anywhere. Yeah. Like, the, the gym that's, in, uh, that's over by where I live, it just got closed down over uh, COVID and whatnot. But um, I rode past the other day after I got out of practice, and I saw people out there working out. So, mm-hmm. I don't know if it's opening back up, because now it's in a small garage. It wasn't yeah. an actual gym. But now it's just a garage. But it was just people out there like jumping rope and doing like jumping jacks and stuff like that. Yeah. But I don't know if it's opening back up or whatever. But it would be cool if they did. But it just seems like the boxing Midwest is, there, is falling yeah, off, man. It's it's and it used to be huge. Like boxing used to yeah. be huge in the Midwest. Yeah. There's a lot of great boxers from the Midwest. Floyd. But it seems, um, yeah, it seems uh, like more exclusive. But yeah, it all, exactly. to me personally, though, it's always felt exclusive. Because if you look at boxers, a lot of them are trained by their... Like their dads. Their, and, yeah, their yeah. dads and their uncle. Yeah. And the name, like boxing is kind of like a corporate business. It's yeah, like, what's really your is. last name exactly. before your first name? Yeah, you got you got so, that last name and they're like, oh yeah, he's going to be good. Yeah, so and then you get a padded record. It's a lot more, yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> for real. Yeah. It's a lot more exclusive um, compared to MMA. And I think a lot of guys are jumping to MMA. Mm-hmm. Because they can find a gym a lot closer. Like yeah. that's how I yeah. feel. Like I was yeah. like, if I would have found a boxing gym, you know, five years ago, I probably would have jumped into boxing before I even thought about doing mixed martial arts. Even though I would still probably watch the UFC more than boxing. But yeah. boxing is like something that you know, it's like you always like. Even as a kid, that's like kind of like your first thought being in America. You know. Yeah. It's like you wanna you wanna use your hands, so right, yeah. <clears throat> but it's it's changing, man. Muay Thai is getting really big. Yeah, it really is. So. At, at at some point, it, Muay Thai was banned in the United States. That's I don't crazy. remember I exactly know. when and and when it got unbanned or whatever. Right. But at some point, I do know it was banned in the United States, and now there's Muay Thai fighters everywhere. It's like so. Muay thai speaking of everywhere. a very great Muay Thai fighter, one of the greatest, Anderson Silva also had a boxing match. Mm-hmm. Versus Tito Ortiz last week. Uh, we'll do a little recap on that. Silva looks good, man. Um, I'm so happy for him because this is like he's he gets to sail off the right way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he he seemed like he's like the darling of MMA. Like people were really getting behind Anderson, and they're they're acknowledging that they're they're showing the love for him. And a lot of people. Was they Silva ever like really hated? Do you think Silva was really hated? So. I don't think I don't, so. I just people think Dana going, hated people, him. Yeah, people were going <laughs> him just because of how he toyed in fights and and a few born fights in a row, yeah. like against Damian Maya. But uh, overall, people have always loved Anderson Silva, yeah, and they've gotten behind hated. him. Yeah, he just because he's such a nice guy. He don't really talk crap. He does showboat, but he don't really talk crap. And he has that soft voice, and he yeah. just. I don't know. He just has that fun style that people like watching, and, and, and I, that's who gets. Uh, that's who got me in the, like watching MMA. I was like, "Dang, this guy's." I mean, yeah. actually, the first person I ever seen was Tito, and then the person that yeah. made me like it was Anderson. So this fight for me was like, "What?" Like, man. Yeah, I think I was like crazy. on YouTube uh, over the weekend, and um, like one of the most like emotional moments I think in UFC history. Was I watched when Anderson Silva uh, the face off with Iz- the weigh in with Israel Adesanya? Okay. And uh, when Silva got interviewed and stuff, and he started kind of crying and tearing yeah. up, you know that was a really emotional moment because this dude is like such a staple in the mm-hmm. UFC. So to see him like transform, because I always knew he had that boxing swag. Yeah. It's always that's yeah. what I always like liked about Silva. Like I was drawn like the first guy I ever watched was Chuck Liddell. Chuck Liddell was the first dude I seen like. <laughs> With them gloves on with hands. Like, I'm like, oh, this dude is crazy. So, like, Chuck Liddell was the first dude I watched. And then, you know, the Tito fights. And then with him knocking Tito out and stuff. Like, I became a Chuck Liddell fan. But I wasn't a big enough USC fan where I was, like, fully committed to yeah. it. till 2011 when I first when I started watching John Jones and that whole journey for him to win the belt. You know, being the youngest to win the belt. I watched right. all of that. But, yeah. um, you know, it's good to see Silva like this because... I always like he always had that potential to um like cross over. Yeah, crossover yeah. and just keep his that that charismatic yep. you know, he could have did something with that. So I'm so glad he didn't waste that and like people see it behind Because I remember wasn't it like okay, after he I think it was when he finished fighting or he always said he was coming back, there was like five years where we were waiting on Silva and like we just see a whole bunch of training videos. Yeah. Like, do you remember that? Yep. Like all those training videos and it was like 
you see it in the in the training. We're like, man, when is we're gonna see Silk? So it's, I'm glad everybody gets to see him now and see I like bet. what. I yeah, bet. trust me, I bet. <laughs> So it's it's good, man. I hope he I hope he I wanna see him keep fighting. I don't wanna see him fight nobody. Let's not get crazy. Yeah, no, no. I, yeah. I honestly I, I like these be, I old, wouldn't older. be mad if he retired. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I wouldn't be mad if he retired. But I think what's next for him is is obvious, man. What's up? Jake Paul. No. I think that's what's next for him. Jake. I do. But back to back to him and, and Tito. Okay. I think Tito took a dive. I don't I'm not gonna so. lie. I, don't I think do. So. I think Tito took a dive. No. If you if you look and if you like actually watch it, right? Tito gets hit, falls into the into the front of the corner or into the corner, then falls back and he's laying face down. He has a little smirk on his face and then it was probably a flash as knockout. soon as as soon as the ten count was up, he hopped up happy as can be and was congratulating everybody and saying oh. <laughs> And then he said, "Oh well, there wasn't enough water in my head. I had to drink water every day." And I was watching it. I was watching an interview with. <laughs> this I was, is bro, I'm, I was I'm watching them. Bro, this I was watching an interview. Okay, Tito. The reason people make fun of him so much, I like I like Tito, but a lot of people make fun of him, and it's because he says the dumbest things. Like whenever he talks about a um, like stuff that he has to go through with training and whatnot, he said he just picks out the dumb stuff. He doesn't articulate it real well, yeah. and he was like. Uh, he was like, you guys don't know what it's like. After he lost, he's, you know, you guys don't know what it's like training real hard, not having a, not being able to sit on the couch, having to drink water every day. And it, like, having to drink water every day? What? Yeah. Is, that, is that what your problem was? Like, you had to drink water every day? Like, no, he just no. didn't come up. And that's why people make fun of him. But I, I really think he took a dive, I don't man. Think he, I don't think he took a dive because I watched Silva throw that punch three times in that fight. He slips the right hand. He ducks under, and he. I'm not saying Silva was. I'm not saying Silva was involved. He was, he was throwing that. To, Silva did to what he was supposed dude. to do. I think. I think if he if Tito took a dive, it's because that punch either gave him a flash knockout, or maybe he could have gotten up before the ten count, but knew he was outclassed, so he you know <laughs> let the ten count go and got out of there because he was clearly outclassed, and like that's what I thought coming into he, it. He I never into thought Anderson's Ortiz. Game, I never thought he could box with no, Anderson no. That's Silva. why Dana said he was he he was Dana White said uh, that the only reason that he was willing to box Tito Ortiz was because he knew he couldn't box. He was like, I would never fight any other fighter. I was trying to box Tito because I knew that he couldn't box. I yeah. knew what was gonna happen. What happened to Tito was what should have happened to Tito. Yeah, but. I just think, I think, that, I just think next, it was a, it was a hear me out because Jake Paul has been talking about, like first he's been talking about not fighting again and then like I guess now recently he's talking about the only fight to make is Jorge Masvidal so that's what he's saying and I would like to see that so I, I want to keep him over here Jorge Masvidal what's next for Anderson Silva is that boy T Wood make it happen Tyron Woodley Anderson no. Silva make no. it happen I'm telling no. you make it happen. You think Tyron? You think uh, Tyron would take that fight? If, if there's some money involved, yeah. Tyron, Tyron's about his money, man. If there's money yes. involved, yeah, I think. I, I don't. Think I so. think that's a great fight. I, I, I do. I think that's a great fight because I don't see nobody else unless you get. I mean, I don't want to see a lot of these. Like, okay, because you already fought Tito, right? And you bought. Well, first you fought Chavez Jr., who was a former boxer. Then you fought Tito. So now you're kind of fighting MMA guys who are retired. So let's <laughs> let's keep that and just fight T Wood. It's a younger retired, he's still retired, but he's younger. He's on a losing streak. But this will kind also is an MMA guy that's retired. So I that's, know, but this will give right but this will give Anderson Silva like the I feel like the the more of the validation than Tito and like he can sit like mm, I, don't know. I, I, would, I think I, like I think Julio that. Chavez was the was the validation right there. To and boxing fans, he, to boxing fans, yeah, yeah, like because a lot of people to don't MMA know fans, to yeah, that's true. But to MMA fans, uh, uh, Tyron is everybody's done with him. Yeah, but people I, are done with Tyron. If, I think that if they if they come back in box and they have a great boxing match, I think people are. And also, I don't Tyron. think Tyron. I don't think Tyron plays his cards right enough to to get this fight because if he did, if he was to get this fight, he would be the bad guy, right? You got to play into that. You can't. He's been the bad. Be he's both. been the bad guy. No, when he well, was going against Jake, everybody he, wanted him to win. Well, that's because they just knew he was going to lose. Well, that's so not so hard. Okay, so his format 
of how he talks isn't gonna change. He's still. Exactly. I mean, I think he's gonna That's be more. No, no, no. no He's going to humble himself out of respect for Anderson exactly, Silva. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. He's not going to play his cards right. They don't want to oh, see him. Oh, okay, I get what you're saying. They want to see. Saying. They want. You got to. You, if you're Tyron and you're the bad guy already, you got to start Who talking crap. Who wanted to see Tito and Silva? Nobody. That's I'm not what saying, I'm saying. Look, I'm, when I say make this <laughs> Tito's fight. Tito's always been the bad I'm guy. I'm not saying make this fight to make $20 million. I'm saying make this fight but because you, there's still but money to make. Possibly make money. You could possibly make more money off of being playing a role. That's all I'm saying. And it's a silver. I mean, um, um, Tyron needs to play a role in order to make himself more appealing. I think he's got the enough. He's not going to get more appeal than what he has. Tyron is who he is. Uh-huh. He's not going to get he more appeal. If he played that role, he would. I don't think so, man. Not with all them losses. There's only so much you can talk, bro. It's only, and that's where I'm glad then, you said that because that's what Connor's getting to. Yeah, it's only yeah. so much you can talk before you gotta back it up. Yeah, you start getting on these losing streaks, man. Nobody. That's why Floyd made so much money. The only thing is, though, the difference between Connor and and Tyron, they're both. It, it's true that they're both um, gonna have to start backing it up, but Connor has a solid fan base like a, he has a solid group of people that are well, with him no matter he's from what. a different country exactly tyron don't have that tyron has people that are with him but it ain't a big fan base like connor's connor has people that are ride or dies like they'll yeah, get into fights it's, over it's getting connor. smaller and smaller yeah it is but it's it still is. big <laughs> yeah no 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 it doubt, is, no doubt. it'll big. be a long time that dude can lose a lot of fights before he yep. ever has he can lose fight. as many fights as he's won and still yeah. be relevant Nate Diaz. Sad. <laughs> exactly. So there's just I'm certain guys. I'm glad I you think, said that. No, because, Nate I mean, Diaz when you go out there and you fight everybody, you're not going to take everyone. Nate everybody. Diaz you're is a loser, gonna, you but know? But Jorge Masvidal is the same. Like, there's just certain guys that people are just going to. Stephen Thompson's the same. I don't think his fan base is ever going to change. That dude could lose a thousand Yeah, he points. don't He don't have, like, a solid fan base like that, though. I think he does as far as, like, who's going to watch him. They're always going to watch Stephen Thompson. Karate guys? Yeah. No, I mean, <laughs> people. there's some people. Cowboy. Is a better example. Cowboy has a good fan. So, yeah. yeah, Cowboy's a better example. But, you know, let's but yeah. talk about that for another day. Yeah, Triller, <laughs> Triller's taking up everybody's podcast, man. Triller is, they just, they're We're doing their thing. The, the crazy part, though, is like, you think about it, Triller is spending so much money. Like, where are they getting this from? Who even owns Triller? I don't even know oh, who owns Triller. One of the dudes that fought they on the undercard, Trump. one of the dudes on the undercard is a billionaire that boxes. He, yeah, he I, I found that out the night of the fight. He fought David Hay, he run, who was a former. Oh, I know who yeah, he, he fought David Hay. He's thirty eight years what? old. He's a billionaire. What? And he boxes. Does he? He runs Triller. I don't know if he runs Triller, but you got to think he's involved. Bro, that he's is a billionaire. Ridiculous. He lost, but they saying that David Hay like took like pulled a lot of punches. And yeah, stuff. yeah, no, I, get it. Was, I guess before that he was he, professionally he was like nine and zero. Oh. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Bro. Yeah, I don't know what's going on over Trailer. there, but we're going to start taking a deeper look. Bro, they, they, had, they had Donald Trump and Donald Trump Jr. on there. How, did, how, how, how can you afford Donald Trump's? How can you afford that? And, you and got a billion they're fighting, man. Like, and, and I know they're lying about them numbers. There's no way they're getting more numbers than UFC. Like, they're not. Man. It's just it's just not. They're just I not. don't know about with that. With Jay Paul... Yeah, I believe it. I, I, I believe don't. It. Jake Paul can fight a homeless man. They're gonna make more money. <laughs> it's just, it's just the way it is right now than a U- than a UFC card. So I don't know, I man. But so. I want to know when Usada is gonna get involved in this trip. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Is, is anybody gonna regulate Triller? Because I'm gonna be juiced up trying to yeah. get a Triller fight. I'm For not real. going in there clean. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be on everything taking Triller fights. Man, I'm telling you. So, but I like Triller, man. I'm gonna. At first, I was kind of iffy about it. I ain't Triller like, sound like like a a rap label or something. <laughs> it do. It really is kind of like a like a '90s rap. Yeah, label. like <laughs> Triller is like. That's I crazy. like Triller though. Like I hope they like expand and don't just do boxing matches. <laughs> like just do bare knuckle. Like, honestly, street like fights. I think they should keep doing. The, <laughs> yeah, honestly, like Parking they should they should keep doing those these um these shows like these circus acts basically. Like they should keep doing that. I, I think we should do form. circus acts, but some like I think you should narrow it down and kind of make it make sense. Yeah, it don't have to be yeah. guys that can fight, but just make it make sense. Like right, right now, it's kind of like anybody's like call, people who have whoever beat, calls right. out who is gonna fight. Like yeah. let's make it make a little bit more sense. Yeah, I agree. But shout out to Triller. 
So we'll jump. So we do got some fights this weekend, and we'll jump to that. After a weekendless UFC. So this weekend, guys, we do have UFC fights. It's another fight night card. And it's main event by Anthony Smith versus Ryan Spann. Two names that I can pronounce. <laughs> Proud of that. Um, before we jump into that, just real quick. Was there any other fights or anything that you want to talk about on that card? You want to jump straight to it? Um, there's a there's a few names on this card. Uh, like Emily, Emily Whitmire and Hannah Strongman Goldie. And, uh, that's You ever seen that girl? That girl is so. buff, dude. Like she, It's a, a blonde white girl. She's like real muscular. But yeah, you saw to check that. I'll, but, uh, I'll, I'll watch it. I'll be watching. That's this at weekend. that's at Flyway. And uh, Hannah Gold is actually not bad. She just fought recently, and uh, I think she lost, but it was a close fight. I think she could have won it, and now she's turning around real quick. And I like that in her that she's turning right around and saying, "No, I'm not accepting a loss on my record. I want to get one back." So I think uh, I think I'm gonna take her in this fight actually. And then uh, Impa Kasagana is fighting. I don't know the guy he's fighting, but uh, oh, okay. But I like, I Impa like Kasagana yeah, is yeah, the yeah. guy who got spinning back. Right, right, right. <laughs> but he's better than Buckley. He just yeah. got caught. It really is just a free knockout. But uh, he's also on his card. And then you got JP Bays. He is going to get demolished yeah, I lost a lot by Montel on Jackson. Him. Montel yeah. Jackson is a wrestling heavy guy. And. He's going to destroy. Um, he's going to destroy this dude. That's the biggest favorite on the card is Montel right. Jackson. So, right, yeah. Cool. And then you got, uh, I think, a, a good um, underdog on this card would be Raquel Pennington. She's going against mm. uh, Penny Kanzad. And I'm not saying she's going to win, but, I mean, if you're going to bet like on an underdog, I would, I would bet on her. And also, um, Joaquin Buckley's fighting Antonio Arroyo. And if you were betting on an underdog, I would pick... Um, Arroyo, because Joaquin Buckley's not that good. I think this is a must. Like Buckley's got to win this fight. He just got knocked out. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think yeah. Buckley's got to win. This but he, fight. so he won that last one with that that weird kick, and then he went into he's the next one and got knocked two in out. A row, I believe. He's lost. I think he's only lost one. Because the, I, don't know, I, don't I think know. it's two. He he lost one. He lost to Holland. Won the spinning kick uh, knockout, and then I think he lost two after that. If I'm not mistaken. But. No, he, he won against Ampa Kasaganai, then he won against Jordan Wright. I, I forgot. No, he lost. He lo no, he won. He beat Jordan he beat Wright. He beat him by KO. And then he, and then he lost to Alessio Jericho, who just got destroyed. And then, right. um, but yeah, that, those were his Man, last look, three. I, why did I thought he, he won against, I mean, lost to Jordan Wright? No, nah, he, he beat Jordan Wright. Right. And then, uh, then, Kevin Hort then Kevin Horton, Kevin Holland beat Jordan Wright after that, didn't he? I remember seeing him. I like, thought I saw him. Jordan. Find out about Jordan Wright. I thought Jordan Wright was on the win streak. That's the light skin kid, ain't it? Isn't that that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. thinking of some. Okay, yeah, no. yeah. He's the one that mixed his oh, weight no, class. No, 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 no. I'm wrong. I'm yeah, wrong. I was like, he lost. Yeah, he got KO'd by Joaquin Buckley, but then he beat Jamie Pickett. Okay. Okay, but yeah, um, Joaquin Buckley's not that good, man. I, I if I was to pick an underdog on this card, it would be Raquel Pennington. And Antonio Arroyo. Okay. We'll see how that turns out. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to the main event. Uh, Anthony Smith versus Ryan Spann. For me, I think this is a perfect fight for Anthony Smith. Um, it's it's another, like, uh, they're kind of just feeding them fish right now. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, his last fight with Devin Clark was another fight that I thought was a perfect fight for him. Uh, this fight is another one. It's with a guy who's a stand-up guy. He likes to stay on the outside. Try to throw power punches. Yeah, tries to throw yeah. power punches. Um, you know, he he does have submissions on his belt, but he's only a blue belt, and <laughs> he's not gonna submit Anthony Smith. I'm gonna take Anthony Smith by submission. Yeah, I think I'm so take too. Him by submission. I think so too. I I would say what round? either TKO or submission in round one or two. I give him round two, be just because Ryan Spann likes to stay on the outside, and Anthony Smith's gonna have to get get it to the ground, and I think that Ryan Spann he moves his feet pretty well in and yeah. out, so it's gonna be, his takedown defense isn't yeah. that bad either. I, yeah, I actually I actually was a fan of Ryan Spann, but then he got knocked out by Johnny Walker, and that just turned me all the way off. I was like, 
Yeah, Johnny, Johnny Walker? Walker fell off. But dude, there was a time where Johnny Walker was. Yeah, he was supposed to be John yeah. Jones. Yeah, so. And then he did the worm in. And some people don't. They just don't come. Like I don't know if it's just because the embarrassment and like yeah. you lost confidence or whatever. But. Yeah. Like I don't know, man. Johnny and Walker's a different man now. The guy that knocked him out well, isn't even in the UFC anymore. Yeah, um, I don't so, know. I, don't I mean, know. I don't know. Like I, I think I don't think he's in the UFC. <laughs> Corey is. Corey. Um, ah, no, I can't remember his last name. Black dude, wrestler. He knocked Johnny Walker out in the first round. That's the oh, one Corey Anderson. About. Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't seen. But Corey Anderson's about, about to fight for. I think he's fighting for the belt in uh Bellator. Ain't but that's what I'm saying. He's not even in the UFC anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm. That's my <laughs> point. Yeah, that's but bad. um, yeah, I, I look to Anthony Smith. I want to see the odds on this uh after the weigh-ins. And uh, see how big of a favorite he is. I'm gonna put some money on Smith by submission in the second round. So, okay. and then we'll see what's next for Smith. Smith get gets past Ryan. Um, we'll see what's next for Smith. I wonder if they're gonna throw him to the wolves at that point. I think it's time if he beats uh, Ryan Spann. I think it's time for him to move up and uh, actually fight. You know, a, not somebody a top good. top guy, but somebody yeah, somebody good. ranked. <laughs> yeah, for so, real. Uh, but I, I think it was good for him because he was he was doing bad, man. I, I think, think this it's is the UFC way of saying like our bad. You yeah, know exactly. Him. They're giving him. They're you know, they're kind of like rewarding him. Yeah, because like, that that whole uh, yeah, controversy of him like continuing that fight um, over quarantine uh, with his teeth falling out, it was pretty <laughs> bad, man. Yeah, he got veneers now. So, yeah, we'll we'll see uh, if he loses this fight. He officially comes the UFC two hundred five gatekeeper. <laughs> Pretty so much. he's got to win this. This don't get me wrong. This is like a must win for Anthony Smith. So there is some pressure there, but uh, so far he hasn't been folding to the pressure, and uh, he's been looking good. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Was there anything else you wanted to recap or talk about in the future? No, nope, not really. Nothing. All right, folks. That was our recap on the Triller fights, and looking forward to the Anthony Smith Ryan Span fight. We'll be back. With uh, letting you know how it went, I guess, and if we won some money. <laughs> so this was episode seven, the From a Fan's Perspective podcast. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend. As tell a friend. As always, we appreciate you guys, and we're out.